Is Miranda required when a person is in handcuffs? Hey guys, my name is Anthony Bandiero, bringing another roadside chat. I really appreciate the support, hitting the like button, the commenting, the uh, subscribing really does help the channel. So this question, um, you know, comes from an officer, you know, in I think California, no Phoenix. So look, quick question. I, 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 the officer says, I see your other videos when Miranda is required for arrest like custody. So let's say the subject is just in handcuffs on the side of the road and we tell them they are not under arrest. They're not in custody. They're only being detained. Are we able to question them without reading Miranda? Well, let me just tell you like the default rule here. The default rule is when you put people in handcuffs, Miranda is required, right? Um, is that always the case? Of course, no, there's always exceptions, but the hallmark of an arrest is putting somebody in handcuffs. Therefore, if you're going to, to not read Miranda, you have to get the custody out of the deten of, of the, you know, the, the detention, right? Um, a person should not feel like they're in arrest like custody. Courts are going to give police leeway to investigate without me reading Miranda. I mean, think about the DUI. How many times do you read Miranda, right? You talk to the guy, have you been drinking and so forth? Where are you coming from? These are all questions that may incriminate them, the person, but the courts give you leeway because you're just trying to find out what's going on. Think about the domestic violence. You show up, <clears throat> you start talking to the spouses. What's going on tonight? Maybe you have to put one in handcuffs and they start saying things incriminating. Well, are we okay? Is that going to need Miranda? Maybe not, but I can tell you one thing that the courts will absolutely require. You ready for it? They're going to require that you had a damn good reason for putting somebody in handcuffs during a detention. If you're like, oh, you know, we just want to be safe. We didn't know what was kind of going on. Then I'm telling you, you're basically uh, con uh, convincing the court, encouraging the court to uh, side against you to basically require that that encounter required um, Miranda. So a couple best practices. Number one is be inquisitive. Your Honor, I'm just trying to find out what's going on here. Number two, you better articulate a damn good reason about why you put that person in handcuffs. And a little pro tip, if handcuffs go on, they can come off. If the person is now being cooperative, you don't feel they're a fight or flight risk, Take those handcuffs off of them if you're trying to not require Miranda. All right, let me give you some uh, some cases, right? So, defendant was, this is a paraphrase here, this is not an exact quote, but defendant was not in custody during any pre-Miranda interrogation. When he was asked about cooperating with the Federal Bureau investigation he um, to help them investigate child pornography, the defendant was in his own home, Agents advised the defendant several times that he was not under arrest. That's very good. That's that, that concept comes from a case called Behealer out of the U.S. Supreme Court where they said, look, telling somebody that they're not under arrest, if true, does help remove the custody from the interrogation, right? Um, and he was free to leave, although agents restrained the defendant when he was in the grip of his initial panic when they actually served a search warrant on his house. The handcuffs came off before the agent began interrogating him, so they took the custody out of the interrogation. The agents engaged him in a tone that was non-confrontational, the agent's weapons were never drawn, and the interview lasted all, at most a few minutes. Okay, so there's that one case. Here's another case. Defendant, this again, it's a paraphrase, not an exact quote. Defendant was not in custody when he was interrogated by police and Miranda warnings were thus not required. Although defendant was handcuffed, when police met him at the parole office, the parole officer had the hand and had handcuffed him and the police immediately had them removed. The defendant was told he could have his friend drive him to the station for questioning if he liked, and he was promised and given a ride home after interview. That's a little pro tip, by the way. To not arrest people after interviewing them, the courts kind of are encouraged to uphold it as a interview, not an interrogation, because they were released after the interview all of which objectively was objectively inconsistent with a degree of restraint and equivalent to an arrest. What's the point here? The point is this. Look, is it possible to, um, to interview somebody in handcuffs on the side of the road without Miranda? Absolutely. The fact that they're in a public place, people can see them, you know, maybe they're not surrounded by police, there's no guns drawn, the cop is still being inquisitive, the cop had a damn good reason for putting him in handcuffs in the first place, right? 
You, uh, you told them he's not under arrest. I think that we can justify this. But the general rule is, is that once you put the person in mechanical restraints, Miranda is required. If you're going to want to avoid that, you're going to need to articulate the hell out of it and make it crystal clear about why they were not in arrest-like custody when you interviewed them. All right? All right. Hope this helps keep the questions coming. Uh, coming. And I like to say, I hope this video has helped you. Get it right every time. That's the goal here, my friends, your legal survival. See you next time.